Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited. I shouldn't say excited. I'm actually kind of depressed for this week's <laughs> weekly roundtable. We've got <laughs> Tate Litchfield from FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. How are you, Tate? Doing well. Happy to be here. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm Eric sad, Peterson though. from Landopia.com. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing good, thanks. And last but not least, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. I just want to let everybody know today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, down payments, automated payments. It is the first automated financial CRM. It is amazing. Right, Eric Peterson? It's pretty awesome. All right. That's going to be the most positive thing we talk about today <laughs> because our, <laughs> our round table is going to be about biggest pet peeves. You know, I know we've got a, a podcast called The Best Passive Income Model. And we talk about how this business is amazing. It's a one-time sale. We get recurring income and we don't have to deal with renters or rehabs or renovations or rodents. And it's simple. All you got a piece is a land and just a, 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 you know, a buyer and a seller. That's it. Like it's super simple, but it is a business and there are some annoying things in the business. Eric Peterson, let's start with you. What's your biggest land investing pet peeve? I, I think it would have to be the paper. Um, I just, and I, I don't really keep any paper, just having to deal with it, scan it, organize it in some way, file it away so I can find it in the future. Um, and that goes to, you know, sending checks out uh, for payment for land to, um, yeah, I mean, just all the, all the paperwork stuff, I guess, is probably the thing I like the least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but look, you got TurboScan, Simplifile, mm -hmm. right? Dropbox. I don't know. We're yeah. pretty paperless. LG Pass. And then yeah. Lob to send out checks. I don't know. Eric, I mean, then, uh, Tate, Tate is, is Eric just not working the system correctly? Like, what, what's this paper about? I get it. Maybe he's got sensitive fingers from all those paper cuts. <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, paper is not my biggest pet peeve. I've got way worse things than that. If, <laughs> if that's his pet peeve, he's doing all right. He's, he's, he's making a lot of money. <laughs> Scott Todd. Yeah. Is this a pet peeve or is this just, is this just Eric Peterson just whining? Just a wuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, uh, when when we when we like first talked about it and we were talking about like pet peeves, I'm thinking like this was serious, and now I'm now I'm dealing with paper. I'm like, I'm tuning out, Mark. <laughs> paper? What are we? Is, is your biggest pet peeve money? Is that the paper we're talking about? Paper money? Like, uh, uh, what do you mean? This is crazy. All right, Eric. How, <laughs> how many sales did you do last last week? Um, I think I closed three last week. You closed three. And how, what what are your numbers to date? Do you know? I know you did at least a hundred grand your first quarter yeah, I, of profit. I, I don't know for the year at this point. Um, I haven't done a good job keeping track this quarter, actually. I'll have to, um, to run some numbers, but, but yeah, I mean, I feel like I've slowed down a little bit though, to be honest. What, why is that? Um, don't say paper. Well, <laughs> there's too much paper. I'm buried in it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, my ads doing the same amount of ads. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say a lot has changed. Um, maybe the, the best properties have sold the quickest. Um, but you know, I'm continuing to get new properties into, um, but ultimately, I mean, it could just be, I need more inventory. Um, I feel like, you know, that's a constant thing, just pushing for more inventory. Gives yeah. more options and and so on. So, absolutely, absolutely. So, Tate Litchfield, if Eric Peterson's biggest pet peeve is is dealing with the paper, which by the way, like when I started, I actually did have physical paper. Like you know, 
I, I wasn't deal. I didn't have Dropbox back then. I, you know, there wasn't Turbo Stone Scan age. app. There wasn't Stone Simplify. Age. Like there was real. Like I had to go to Staples and spend two hundred dollars on a freaking filing cabinet and put the real paper in the <laughs> real Manila envelopes and label them. Today, none of that happens. So I am now playing for you, Eric Peterson, the smallest violin. All right, all right. But that's okay. I, because I should have thought of a better pet peeve, but it's all that came to mind. That's great. That's great. Tate Litchfield, so, what's your biggest pet peeves? So I got a couple. Um, my biggest pet peeve is notarizing. I hate having stuff. I hate having to go and get things notarized. I mean, I know there's alternate ways, but when you're doing deals like me, I mean, maybe Scott can relate to this. I'm at the bank like every week getting stuff notarized. The guy knows me by name. I typically go right before his lunch break so that he wants to get out of there in and out real quick. You know, it just takes forever. I I hate that aspect. Uh, And I don't know. I mean, it's part of like my daily or my weekly thing where I go on Mondays and Fridays to get stuff notarized. But it's just a time suck. Kind of hate it. You don't want to spend the 25 bucks and do it online? Yeah, I guess I could. Um, it doesn't work, though, everywhere. I like know. It, it's flaky. They, they say they do, but it doesn't. It's flaky. I mean, honestly, that service, it's like I can go and get it done and have it recorded in less than an hour. And then I got to wait for the service to get it. I don't know. I, I just don't find it as efficient, but I still hate doing it. My other biggest pet peeve, multiple owners on a deed that aren't in the same state. Forget it. I'm out immediately. Like if you don't, if you and your siblings don't live in the same state, I'm out. I'm not even doing it. It's a, like, I'm walking on that. It can be the deal of the century. I'm out. I, I, th- I think the, the notary thing you've got to, you've got to turn into like a fun outing with Allison. For those of yeah, you who don't know, Al- Allison state's wife. So like, I think like, like it can't just be the bank. Like now you've got to go to like, the bank and a cafe That'll and combine work. it. And so now you're taking this sort of chore and, and then, you know, replacing it for something positive. Like I'll, I'll, I'll deal with this 15 minute headache at the bank in exchange. I get to hang out, you know, another, why are you, why are you giving that look Scott in another 30 minutes with his wife? I we think it's, it, it could be now relationship enhancing. Okay. All right. It's a little bit of a stretch, but, um, you know, I, uh, she'll often be like, yeah, because our bank is right next to a tropical smoothie. So she'll be like, yeah, on the way back, just, uh, you know, get me a sunrise, whatever the one she likes, a Hawaiian sunrise on the way home. So there's worse things than to complain about. But multiple people on the deed, that's a real, that's a real pet peeve of mine when you don't live in the same area. Scott Todd, how do you deal with that? Uh, multiple people on a deed. Uh, what I do is, is I uh, typically have like one, I tell the person like, okay, you're responsible for this deed. Okay. Like I'm sending it to you and then you got to pass it around. I'm not doing the, the pass around work for you. And so they, they take it and they pass it around and um, they bring it together and they send me one, one deed back together. So it take those, those take a while, but I tell them like, look, you're, you're responsible for this. So get it done. The and, last one uh, I did. That's it. The last one I did like that, Scott, came back and it was, it looked like a dog got it. There was coffee <laughs> marks all over. It's like, I can't, it's like, what happened here? It's been a war zone. Would this go to the other side of the world and then come back? I mean, it's just, I mean, you can You see, that's, 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 uh, that's the fact that you've done so many deals, right? Like, because now you can get choosy with them. And you're like, eh, I'm not interested in it. You know, it's, it, it comes from deal flow, right? Deal flow solves all problems. True. True. Yeah, I, I have to, like, Scott Todd, what's your, what's your biggest pet peeve right now? Or, or Tate, are we done? Oh, uh, well, I could, or, or do, I could you, go you for some... hours. I could go for, no, I'm kidding. That would be interesting to see what Scott's are. High and mighty Scott. Well, my, I mean, my, <laughs> mine aren't that complex because I would just get people to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I just going to have someone go do it for me. But you know, like, I think that the things that annoy me are the things that, um, like that uh, I've got these people sometimes that I'm trying to buy land from and I go to issue their, I, like I'll issue their check and then, you know, they'll say like, Oh, I don't have it. Okay. Well, um, this is where we mailed it to. Oh, well you got the wrong address. Well, no, 
you gave me the wrong address. I asked you like, is this, is this the address? And you said, okay. Uh, or like I've got, I've got one guy, I've literally mailed him two checks, two checks and he still doesn't have me. And I just got an email from him. Like, what do you have pony express down there? And I know I've, I know they've been processed these checks. And I, I had to go back to him and say, look, dude, um, you know, uh, what, what are you talking about? I've mailed them. They've come from the bank. They've come through, you know, lob. I can see them. They don't, they don't, they don't go anywhere. I, you know, I don't get them back. I don't know where, where's your check. I mean, what are you doing with them? Hoarding the checks. And then I have to put a stop payment on it. So it's like the, the payment of sellers is, is a, is a pet peeve for me. Like I, like, why can't I just give them my credit card and make it go away? And I get some miles too. Why? I've never had that op happen, Scott. You need oh, to I have it happen all the time, man. Why aren't you using Venmo? Hey, Tate, hey, sellers are old, man. Well, I mean, so what? My it's sellers like, you are old. Get your money? You want your money? Download this app. <laughs> well, I had a lady. I had a lady. I told her, like, you want your money? Here, you got to get it through uh, the, the cash app, through Stripe. Yeah. And she downloaded it. She's like, oh, good. I, I sent her the money. And she couldn't get it. Do you know why? because her bank account was overdrawn and her debit card was declining when they were trying to verify it. Yeah. Uh, so then I had to Western union her the money cause she needed it same day to which she paid the fee by the way. But she still had to go Western union it. Yeah. It's all on the computer, man. Oh, okay. Not bad. I'm, it's weird. Cause I never have, for me, it's like I send you a check and that's the last time I hear from most people. Oh, uh, I wish. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, that is, uh, that is a pet peeve. I, I, is it my turn to, to commiserate here? Yes. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I've got two huge pet peeves. My biggest pet peeve are the speed of title companies, right? You got a big bulk deal and now they need this and they need that and they need this. And then next thing you know, where's my preliminary title report, right? And it just, it, like, why is this taking so long? Tate, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I feel your pain doing it right now. And it's like, how many emails, how many phone calls do I need to pay, place? I mean, this is a five-figure right. bulk deal. Like, you, right. you think that they'd be interested. Yeah, or the sellers are, are, are not preparing, not putting in the, the right paperwork or, you know, or whatever it is, the speed of title companies is... It's just a pet peeve of mine. Um, my second biggest pet peeve is that you guys have pet peeves. Like, I, I, I mean, I really am that guy that was like, I went to school in the snow, uphill, both ways. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, and like, your lives are yeah. so much simpler than mine. Mark, in, Mark, in, when I first start, like when I first started, like I feel like you've all lost complaining privileges. Paper. I, I do agree. I do agree because I, I have to laugh though because um, I will see people using LG Pass, you know, and I remember back before LG Pass, sitting there at the computer and making these documents and and doing all this stuff, and then you see people that that are like. Well, I wish it did this. I, we're going to get there. I promise you. But you should see what it was like two years ago. It didn't exist, right? Like we're doing great. We'll get there. Used to, yeah. I, I used to be thrilled that it only took me 20 minutes to do my contracts because I was so clever that I was, I was doing all this automation. That 20 minutes has now been reduced down to two seconds. What, I mean, how many hours did we save last month in LG Pass? Uh, it was like 3000 minutes. Um, the minutes, I forgot the tracking. Hold on. No, um, it, it had to be more than that. Right. Like 3000, no, 3000 hours, 3000. Yeah. Hours. I was going to say it's, minutes. it's nuts. Right. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to have the right number right here for you. So, uh, let's see, here it comes ready. Um, 2875 hours in the past 30 days. Yeah. So 120 I mean, days. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> it really, I mean, it's, it's never been a better time ever to be in business. Right. When I first started, like there wasn't a billion people on one platform. There just wasn't like, I would go to eBay at first 
And like, I thought that was great, right? But then I had to deal with all those issues. Now I can list properties for free. I can put 124 ads out with a click of a button on the Craigslist. I mean, that's, it's just nutty. So I don't know if, if anyone's ever feeling frustrated, just call me. <laughs> I'll, I'll get, I'll get you in line and Eric Peterson paper. Are you kidding me? You don't even have paper. You don't even know what paper is my friend. I had to go, I used to, have to go to Kinko's. You want to talk about paper? I used to, have to go to Kink. Uh, they don't even have Kinko's anymore. I'd go to Kinko's with the big subdivision maps and I'd just scan them in. Right. And it costs like three bucks to do. And then I have to mail it out. I have to fold it just the right way. And then I'd send out paper packages to the buyers. Right. Whatever. You guys, you know what? I really, I this really feel old. This podcast is over. Yeah. This pod, yeah this, <laughs> I, I really feel old. I really feel old. Can we pivot to another depressing topic? Let's do it. All right. Let's talk about failure points. Why on earth do people fail in this business? I have a theory, but I'd like to hear what Eric Peterson's theory is. Eric, why do people fail? Um, well, I guess my assumption would be that, I guess it could be a number of things. Um, one would be that, you know, they just don't like being on the phone dealing with buyers and sellers. Um, I think that could easily cause someone to, to not want to continue in the business if, if that's not something they enjoy or can tolerate. Um, I suppose, um, money could be another issue, um, or perhaps some kind of huge mistake that, uh, that puts someone out of business. I don't know. You know, I mean, all I can do is guess. Yeah. Tate, what's your, what are your thoughts? Why, you know, you, you see somebody, they start and then where, where'd they go? You know, I think it could be a lot of different things. And the thing that I'll focus on is if you do this full time, you're normally working at home and you could literally spend your entire day in a, in a room and not talk to anyone, right? So I think that part of the reason people fail is they don't have that accountability. Maybe they're, own, they're their own worst enemy. They don't have... I don't know, weekly calls with other investors or, or masterminds. Maybe they're not doing the mastermind call and they, they lose that fire. And, you know, if we just look at recent boot camp attendance, I mean, how many people are attending boot camp for their fourth and fifth time? Right? The reason they're attending is because it's that time to network and connect with other people who are in the same situation as them. So I think loneliness, maybe just being alone all day. That, that could be a reason for failure. Yeah, it, it absolutely could be. I, I mean, not to make this all about me, but I remember I was very lonely in the beginning, right? I know, Tate's playing a violin for me. <laughs> um, it, you know, I, and I was scared to tell anybody what I was doing. I had scarcity mentality. My, my friends thought I was a drug dealer, right? Because, I mean, I was playing with my kids all day and, and making all this money. And they didn't understand, like, how can Mark live like this? I'm like, you know, it's, I, 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 I'm in real estate. <laughs> That's what I would say. Uh, Scott Todd, failure points. Uh, I think, um, I think that sometimes people have the uh, incorrect assumption that they will be able to achieve numbers that are not necessarily achievable as fast as they want. So t Tony Robbins, you know, he says a lot of things. One of the things that he, he says is that people will sometimes, um, sometimes like over believe what they can achieve in one year and under believe or, you know, under think what they can achieve in decades. And I think that what happens is, you know, they, they look at the success and they listen to us talk about the deal flow or they listen to this podcast and listen to Eric talk about, his profit from the last quarter. And what they don't realize is that there's a ramp up leading to this. So then what they do is they, they have unrealistic expectations of what they can do to achieve. 
and they think that it's going to going to scale like a unicorn type of a startup business. And then as a result that it doesn't hit those numbers, they lose, uh, lose interest in it. And then like look to something else, they get shiny object syndrome. And I think that the reality is, is that this business, like a lot of things in real estate is it's a very low to the ground, um, you know, ramp up, meaning that, you, you know, you're going to come to the, you're going to run on the ground for a long time. Your revenues, your cash back in the bank is going to be uh, very thin. And then all of a sudden you'll reach, the, reach this inflection point to where it begins to take off like a plane. So everybody's runway is going to be different, but once it starts to take off, you know, it, it really does take off and take off quickly. Scott, on that, how do you think scaling don't you think that some people scale too quickly? Yeah, I think that they, um, you know, like they'll, what they'll do is, uh, I've seen people where they will, uh, they will think well, it's all about numbers. And uh, so they'll just get a list and they'll mail it to a thousand, thousand names without ever knowing like, okay, well, what really is the numbers? And so again, 20 a day, a hundred a week, when you start off at that pace, it might seem slow, but what you're doing is you're educating. It's, it's like walking, right? Like you, you didn't just start off running. You stood up, you walked kind of slowly. You got your balance. You understood what the, the numbers were. And then, then you began to run. And once you begin to run, then you can get faster and faster and faster and faster. And then you can start to scale. But I think that a lot of people try to scale from day one. Yeah, it's true. I, I think my theory is um, the lack of of realistic expectations right or any expectations i think i think the focus on results instead of effort when you first start something is a recipe for disaster so if you have this sort of artificial timeline that you know you should close 197 deals your first year like scott todd right or not or he actually did 68 his first year but like if you have this artificial sort of metric that you just create for yourself, not, you know, and because like, okay, you're a rock star in your current position, but this is completely new to you, right? It, it may not translate perfectly over. Um, I think, I think lack, I think, I think having um, sort of this artificial timeline and then um, not embracing the suck, Right. Um, refusing to be uncomfortable. And then you're like, okay, this, this just isn't for me when you really don't know. You haven't given it enough long. You haven't been doing it long enough or hard enough and you haven't suffered enough to even get through it. I don't know. Tate, what do you think? Yeah, totally. I mean, it, when you're starting off, you're prime in the pump, right? It's yeah. True. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a, battle of endurance can you get up and just take the blows every single day and then soon enough you prime that pump long enough and the water starts to flow and that's when you can start thinking about scaling yeah i mean to be good at anything you've got to go through the pain in the in the, in the learning curve of it i mean eric peterson what do you think yeah yeah i i, I completely agree i think that uh you know even in my own track so far i mean um you know, just being diligent about staying with it, no matter what the results are, you know, you're not getting any leads. Well, you know, keep going, you know, increase your ads. Don't stop, you know, placing ads this week because you didn't get any leads last week, you know. Um, so, so yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, if you don't quit, you can't fail essentially, <laughs> right? Like if you have full commitment, you burnt your ships, it's really hard to fail. I mean, it's not just for the land investing business, it'd be any business, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you go at anything hard enough, diligently enough, consistently enough, um, you, you'll, you'll get there eventually. Um, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I agree, Mark. I think, uh, you know, you, you've got, you've got to continue to, um, to press down, you know, press on, like if you're not getting the results, double down work harder at it and uh, you'll, you'll start to see that trickle in. Sometimes, sometimes things just take a little while. It's like planting uh, seeds. Sometimes those, those seeds bloom a little later and 
you know, you just have to keep, keep uh, your measurements of success. That's why I like measuring things that I can control, mailing 20 offers a day, placing 20 ads a day out in, on Craigslist, all those things I can control. I can't control who's going to pick up the phone to call me. I can't control which ads are going to get responded. I can't control how many people are going to accept my offer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you got to have grit, right? So motivational books, when you go through and you're starting this new business, how do you keep yourself motivated? Eric Peterson, how do you keep yourself motivated? And I, I think, uh, staying connected to, you know, like-minded people is, is key. Um, you know, I mean, there's definitely books out there that can encourage you and, and help out, but, um, staying connected to like-minded people, I think is probably the number one, uh, best thing, uh, I would say to do. I love it. Here, uh, Tate Litchfield, how about you? How do you stay motivated? Um, you know, I implement the 12 week year a lot and, uh, that really helps me keep on task and, you know, just reaching out to other people and attending boot camps and, and doing those kind of things that I know will benefit me in the long run. I love it. Scott Todd, how do you stay motivated? Write down my goals every day. The five big goals I'm trying to achieve, write them down every day because man, when they're big, and you're like, well, I got a lot of work to do to get to them. There's no time to worry about the little stuff. I love it. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, it is a mental game, isn't it? It's all mental. Very much. Yeah. Um, I know for me, I, I love, you know, just picking up a book or a blog or just reading something and thumbing through it. I mean, having, you know, the 10X rule at my disposal or just listening to Grant Cardone go on and on. You know, and it's, it's great. It's, I, I find that motivating. When's the last time you read, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? I mean, that's super motivating book. Um, for sure, for sure. Um, all right, well, now we're at that point, guys. Tip of the week. Website, resource, book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Eric Peterson, what have you got? All right, so today it's typeform.com. Have you seen this? I have, but for those okay. of you who haven't, it's very good. Yeah. So, uh, it's basically just, you know, um, a new way to look at online forms, um, tries to make them a little more friendly and personal. Um, I haven't actually used it for anything yet, but, uh, I think the concept is, is very nice. And I think it's, very well done. And you can get started for free. Yes, you can. I love it. Typeform.com. All right. The pressure's on Tate Litchfield. What's your All tip right. of the week? So my tip of the week is a website called clickmeter.com. And basically, oh, what yeah. It, yeah, what it allows you to do is monitor, compare, and optimize your marketing links in one place to increase the conversion rate. I read that from the website. But... Um, it's a really cool feature. Um, I've been using it in Craigslist. You can use it in your deal of the week ads as well. And basically let you monitor who's clicking, when they're clicking, where they're clicking from, gives you a bunch of information. Um, I really like using it when I'm doing a little bit of blind ads on Craigslist to see how much attention these ads are, are getting because sometimes people click, but they don't respond. And that tells me one thing versus a, a response. So lots of cool, uh, cool fe features within this. So clickmeter.com, check it out. Very cool. All right, Scott Todd. All right, Mark. What's, what's your tip of the week? All right, you're gonna love this one, man. It's this website that I kind of have been introduced to in the last, I don't know, week. It's this thing called Airtable. Have you seen this thing? Oh, I can't believe you're going in there. All <laughs> right, not. tell, tell, the, tell <laughs> oh, the story no. though. Okay, listen. Because last for, week- For those of you that uh, did not listen to last week's show, Mark, Mark uh, gave his tip of the week, which was Airtable. And, and Tate and I, we were like, ah, forget it. We, we, you know, we, we, we were down on it. You know, we, we were joking when we did it. And then what happened was I was looking at it on uh, last Tuesday night and I'm like, well, let me see this thing. It does look kind of cool. 
And I started playing with it around uh, 9.30 p.m. And then I started getting sucked in, sucked in more and more and more. Next thing I know, I look up, it's 2 a.m. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been on this thing forever. I got to go to bed. Went to bed, woke up, exhausted, and still had great, great ideas of what I could do. So Mark, great tip of the week last week. You know, just want to fix that. I mean, come on, I, great or epic? I mean, we got we to gotta use a better adjective than great. Okay, okay. I'll give you epic. That was, that was a good I mean, find. I'm saving now 117 bucks a month. It just ate my CRM, right? And, it's, and it ate Smartsheet. Right there, that's 117 bucks a month I just yeah. saved on one epic tip yeah. of the week from last week. It, there's so many things you can do with it. Now, now I'm thinking like multiple things. Like, let me do this. Let me do that. Let me try, try this. And see, that's what happens is like you, you, uh, you get time because you grow your business to where you have some time and then you can start playing with all these uh, geeky, geeky tools, you know? So is Airtable going to be your tip of the week? No, it's not. But I want to give you kind of, uh, kind of, I, I wanted to redeem you from last week. Okay. I appreciate, I know what, I really do appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, you, your, your tips of the week are, are always better than mine. And yeah. so finally, I came up with one that I that was you know, good. It was good. Yeah. I, so, I loved it. Yeah. All right, Mark, here is my real tip of the week. And it's, um, it's a, I'm going to give everybody a, a URL. I want you to check this out. It's a website that you've heard of before, but there's something new about it. Um, it is landmoto.com forward slash the land geek. Okay. And I want, you know, if you guys go take a look at this, um, if you're looking at like right this second, you might be a little surprised, but you know, it, it will be there landmoto.com forward slash the land geek. And what's happening is we are making landmoto. We're doing a pivot and we are going to allow outside people outside of my company to actually list their properties on there. Enjoy my traffic, enjoy my network, enjoy my customers, my mailing list. So details will be found on that URL landmoto.com forward slash the land geek. I loves it. I loves it. All right. So my tip of the week, um, it's not going to be as good as last week's. It's not going to be as good as Airtable. It's not going to be as good as, you know, listing your properties on, on Scott's platform. Or probably won't be even as good as Typeform or uh, ClickMeter. But everybody needs a landing page at some point, right? And we always talk about, you know, this landing page or that landing page. Well, here's a new one called landinglion.com. Landinglion.com. Have you guys seen this one? No, haven't been there. No. Uh, Tate, have you seen Landing Lion? No, I haven't. Eric? No, I haven't seen it. All right, check it out. It, and you can get started for free. There's integrations, there's templates. You can put together a little landing page in, in no time. So it's very cool. Um, also, for those of you that are looking for VA help, um, I think I mentioned this before, but check out vas.thelandgeek.com as well. And, uh, you know, get on the wait list if you want trained land investing VAs at your disposal. So um, are we good? Was this a good round table, guys? Anything else? I think so, Mark. Really Tate? good. Really good. Eric? Yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, it went, you know, it, it, it started off dark, but I think we ended up with a positive note, right? All because of Airtable. All, yeah, all, well, of course. All of it is very <laughs> table. Yeah, Eric, Eric's like, what are you using it for? I'm, it's running my business. I'm using it for a CRM. There's so much automation with it. It's sick. It is, it's a database spreadsheet combined, mm -hmm. and it's simple to use. I don't know. I mean... Scott, what are you using it for? So, uh, so basically, I was using some. Um, uh, I was using some um, like Google Sheets for things, and I had them. I started converting them over to this because, like Mark said, it's a database. It links links between tables. Uh, it makes kind of the management of some data really good, and then it allows me to um, look at it, the data in different ways. So I can look at it in um, you know, like a grid, like your normal spreadsheet. I can look at it as a form where 
people can insert new data for me. Uh, I can look, have it look at as a calendar view for certain things. So one of the things that I did, which is kind of geeky, is I took all of my um, all of my uh, notes and I put in there the payment date that they're due and the amount, so I can get a visual looking calendar of of uh, money coming in by day. So I can see like what when when it's supposed to be in there. I can start to better plan my capital as opposed to kind of flying blindly. So there's cool ways that you can uh, do things. And I actually started uh, using it to produce some, um, some metrics that we will begin to incorporate into LG Pass uh, down the road. Yeah, absolutely. I'm using it for geek pay also to keep track of, uh, you know, just users in their notes, right? Because, you know, it's, it's tiered pricing, zero to 10 notes, uh, 11 to 15 notes, all that. So it's kind of cool that what, it's amazing what you can do. Um, so for those of you who are not automating your down payments, automating your collections, check out geekpay.io. Um, also, please subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot to support at thelandgeek.com. Of your review, we're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Let's do this. One, One two, two Three. Let freedom ring. ring. Oh, man. I can pick on Eric. He's like, let freedom ring. <laughs> you know, he, yeah, he's, he's got that Southern thing going. Yeah, so. he's not doing this crap. It's all good. It's all <laughs> good. All right. Well, thank everybody. Thank, thank you. And, uh, you know, learn more about Tate, FrontierPropertiesUSA.com, Eric Peterson, Landopia.com, Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net, LandMoto.com, and of course, PostingDomination.com, forward slash The Land Geek. Learn more about me at TheLandGeek.com. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.